Call the meeting to order. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a roll call, please. Tom Dick Jr. Here. Lisa Petrosky. Here. James Rollo. Here. Dominic Roberta. Here. Deborah Marto. Here. Deborah Freeman. Here. George Toth. Here. Mayor Malgood Stevens. Here. All present. Thank you. An executive session was held this evening at 545 to discuss personnel issues. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the council meeting on April 10th, 2023? I'll make the motion. Early moved and second to approve the minutes. Comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Uh, citizens comment. Peg Yagatich, number one on the list. Well, I've been here I, for over five years now. Every year the same thing. When's my alley getting done? I wash my car. I drive it through my alley. It's mud. No sense even cleaning your car. Now the road, in, keep, in order to keep my mouth shut, they would bring a truck full of gravel and gravel it. Then the garbage truck comes, smashes it all back down. Two weeks later, mud again. So here I am again, when's my alley getting done? Now my, my, my the gravel's this, my road's this high, my yard's here. So every time it rains, my yard becomes a swamp because the road's higher now than my, my yard. Something's got to be done. You know, this is crazy. I've asked every year, every year, and they just keep bringing me more gravel. And that big garbage truck, which ain't supposed to be coming to my into to the alleys, I can't get uh, wall care, is still coming. They back in, clear back to my garage, even though we take our garbage to the side, so they don't have to come back that way. And then they pull out and back down to pick up the rest of the garbage in those other alleys. So, I don't know what can be done, but this is getting to be ridiculous. Yeah. And what's the name of that alley? Wall Karen. Hey, Wall. Can I get to it? No. <laughs> no, it should be Peggy. Both sides? <laughs> both sides, yeah. Yeah, both sides are a mess. Absolutely a yes, mess. Do we have any agenda on that, Don? As, as to paving the alleys? No, we haven't talked about any paving this year. Can we look into that? Sure. Okay. We, we do have a few alleys that need to be worked on, but it's, you know, it's a priority level. So, okay, you know, I can put together some cost estimates and get it back to council. Do you have any other savings or you want to look at? I'll put together a cost estimate. You know, okay. Yeah, I can, I can do a couple of them. And I, I would say both sides of the alley. I know I've I been had complaints about that alley. Yeah. Um, trash, uh, 
uh, all kind of things on the front. Uh, we lived there a couple of weeks, finally Rome was 83 years old, and my neighbor put it out for trash. Um, they left the doors wide open. Of course, Rome went in, and he said there was food in the refrigerator. There's a freezer there with food in it. We already have, for the first time since we, and we've owned that house since 1968, first time we've ever had rats, and we've had rats. And that's, that's why he said there was food, cereal all over the floor, dog food. Uh, the place is filthy. So anyway, um, Betsy, thankfully, we, let, we made a call to Betsy, and she uh, delivered a letter of complaint to Mark McCarrison, who owns the house, who has a nice little house up on the terrace in Trafford. It's my understanding that he's going to walk away from this house. It was his nephew who was living there, had four kids. Um, anyway, two dogs. He, he, I contacted his daughter first of all. I had her, her phone number because she's the dog watch for us. And I just told her that, to let her dad know that the house was open and that there was trash all over the place. So the next day, he must have called. It's his nephew who rented from. He must have called him and he came down the next day and cleared what trash was left out front. But he had a deep fryer that he dumped the grease in the grass in the front yard. I mean, the pigs, I'm sorry. Um, the thing that I want to want to say, you know, Rome and I are older. We're not going to be around that much longer. But you're trying to get businesses come into this town. It doesn't matter if you get businesses, if you allow people to leave their homes trash like that. And not, I mean, you have a code enforcement. He said he made 15 calls to the bank about the, about the house next door to us with no return calls. Don't you have other recourse that you can go after them if they don't return your calls? You know, you can't let that go on. I'm telling you, now, I think that's four or five houses we have on Kenny Avenue, which used to be one of the nicer streets. They're abandoned and empty and not being taken care of. Where Allen's used to live, that duplex has been empty for 20 years. They get on and they put new steps up, and then nothing, you know? I'm just concerned. Uh, Rome wants to put a double-hung window in our bathroom because he's worried about that house catching on fire and us having an escape from. I mean, it's Are a you worry. talking about that duplex? Yeah, 340 and 342. Mr. Brown's. Pardon me? Is that where Mr. Brown lived? Yes, okay. yes. They both passed away, right. both sides. And the nephew um, just moved to Colorado, and he said, take it, I don't want it. And the bank's not, not doing anything about it. We've tried to get people interested. I called my nephew about the house across the street because he does some flips, and he said, I don't want to part of that. You know, I mean, it's filthy. And fencing. I mean, they have fencing. You want to see the pictures that I have? I'm interested. I am. Yeah, yeah so. I am. Please. <coughs> Try the front porch. Nick, are you aware there, of the situation? The, the yellow right? stuff oh, is foam that he sprayed. Now, we walk out our door. This, this is what we see. And we get company. We were getting company from out of state. That's why Rome put the trash out. We didn't want people seeing that. It's embarrassing, you know? Nick, do you have a status on this? What, what is your knowledge to this, please? And what address? The 330, 340, 342. This is 340, 340, 340, 340, 340, 340, 340, he sprayed foam all over it. Rome went and shaved that down after they moved out because it's so unsightly. It's terrible looking. You know, the kids would run their bikes into the fence and it's all broken. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the. I'm gonna put Nick on the spot and let him give us a status on this stuff. Thank you. So on April 24th, I called Mark McCarrison and I left a voicemail. I got the uh, phone number from his son and. Uh, I had you know, left a voicemail asking him to clean up the garbage. So I left to go to Florida uh, the day after that. And I'm going to guess that he cleaned up, per se, what was on the front porch while I was down there. Now, the, the door being open and everything else was news to me whenever I, whenever I came back. After that, uh, I mean, uh, I, whenever I came back, there was already a deadbolt and a lock on the front door. Okay. And, uh, 
three, uh, if, uh, 340 and 342. The, uh, she's right, I did call the, uh, the bank probably about 15 times until they emailed me. And they emailed me, the, uh, the asked me what the code violations of the property was. I emailed them back to her. And they came back and they started repairing some of the uh, violations that were on the, the house. Now, as of right now, there's no, uh, there's no violations on the exterior of the property at 340 and 342. And it, it, there's only so much that you can do for a vacant property and the bank's going to try to ho hopefully try to sell it to somebody who's going to maintain it properly. It, that, uh, there might be some holes and stuff inside the foundation that I don't know about that she, that she is seeing, but I never got any kind of call about any kind of hole or anything that, like that that rodents would be going into. I think so. she mentioned about the chimney not being stable. Is that something right. that we could, because she's uh, afraid it's going to fall on our house? I, I, again, I, I will go up there and take pictures of it tomorrow, and I, I'll handle it as much as I can tomorrow. But, but whenever I looked at both chimneys, it looked like the back one that she's talking about had been repaired with the front one. But I could be mistaken. Yeah, he said he wasn't authorized to repair that one. There was room for a dead raccoon out of the basement I know he's not going to, and that's why I'm saying that. I know he's not going to. It's between the houses, and it was dead. It was hanging out of a hole. And, you know, I mean, it's we just we've lived there too long, and this has been a too nice a town. We raise our kids here. I mean, it doesn't matter how many good businesses we could do to that property. I actually had condemned it uh, whenever uh, at first, whenever the whole property. Had, gone up and the, the chimney had fell on Miss Freeman's past uh, uh, rental unit. She, uh, I, I actually had condemned the whole building. And I, whenever I condemned it, I, uh, and I emailed the property owner at the time, the bank, uh, about the condemnation and all the violations that were on there that had to be fixed. Uh, uh, and as soon as, as soon as they found out about it, they went and got the construction workers to fix it. So, so uh, again, if I'll go back up there tomorrow, take pictures of 360 around the whole property, and then uh, uh, send it back to the bank for any violations that may be there. Have we cited them and brought them to the magistrate? I have not. That far? I have not because they uh, they fixed it, or they were complying with the, the emails that I was sending them. Nick, does the bank have to have a property manager on file with you whenever mm. there's um, no tenant in the house? Uh, so there, there's no tenants, so there's no, it's not being used as a rental right now. So I, I don't know if our ordinance would still comply with that, but Mike would know. They have an individual mm -hmm. that deals with that property. That yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I have their email. That they, I have their email and they respond very fast to it. Okay. I mean, Is so, it, so as of right now. Property? Is that what, I mean, does the bank actually foreclose? It's going up yeah. July. Okay, so they don't know it's July. So, uh, but somebody, somebody is replying to it. I can actually get the name of the bank right now. If they don't, we can't force them to do anything. Okay. That's the problem. Okay. The banks will back off on that. Like, they'll file a foreclosure, but then they won't follow through. And then have a deed issued in their names that they can't. Right. It, it still goes to the property out in Colorado. Right. right. That's the problem. If there's communication, that's half the battle, because a lot of them don't even communicate. Right. So. Right. Hey, Nick, how about tomorrow we set up a time? I have a couple things going on in the morning, and I'll go with you while we take a look at this. Okay. I'll give you a ring in the morning. Okay. okay. I've heard from other residents on Kenny Avenue about the rodent problem. So I guess maybe we should bake, bake or just whatever we're allowed to do. Somebody across the street from from um, Miss Belcher has told me about the rodents, so um, what can we do? As 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 far as I know, the borough cannot do anything about rodents and that close of person like homes. So because and the reason why is because if somebody has a cat or somebody has a dog and they're walking it or they let it out and the cat or the animal bites into it, they could die. Doesn't Decony do that? What? The rodent thing is. Don't you don't you contact the county for rodents? They have our men trained. But that's when we go in the cricks. Yeah. They they will they will put out bait for rabies, but not to kill rodents. If that makes sense. Because it might hit people's pets.
right, we'll get together tomorrow on that. Thank you. Anything else, Colleen? I think I think that's that, that's pretty much what I had written down here. I did mention the fences. You know, you can see on the pictures the fences too. They're just really unsightly. It's very embarrassing when we get company. It is. To, yeah, it is. You know, and it's a shame. We and it's a shame that that's not the only street that's like that. We're in a process of uh, tearing houses down once the bids and everything else come through. The money only goes so far in that too. That's the problem. Yeah, I, I really worry about safety. You know, our house is practically touching the duplex. If they catch us on fire, our house is gone. You know. Thank you. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate both your ladies today. coming and expressing concerns tonight. Anybody yeah. else, sir, did you have anything? No. Okay. I did not. Mayor Stevick. The Pitcairn Police wrote 211 complaints uh, in the month of April. They collected $100 in our mayor fines. That would be street tickets. Nothing from the state, nothing from the magistrate in Romerdue. Um, Pitcairn manages uh, hurts $921. The county, 173 And nothing from the quality of life. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Council to approve a handicapped space for Larry Lepsky at 544 3rd Street. Uh, he has all the paperwork. Moved here by the Chief. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve a request for handicapped parking at 544 3rd Street. Question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So ordered. Mayor, there's 211 complaints. Are they both civil and criminal? Oh, they're, they're everything. The 211 are everything. From traffic, from okay. uh, traffic, neighbor dispute, child uh, juvenile welfare. Okay. Yeah. Just wondering. Uh, Memorial Day service is going to be after Monroeville service. I couldn't get a time today. I would say 11 o'clock. Put a letter to the fire police for 10:30, but they'll come out at 9:30. It's when the band gets done there, and uh, I, I couldn't get a time from the road for that. So we will have a memorial day service on Monday the 20th. Also, the chief's had a problem, and he's going to talk a little bit about dogs letting being let loose. They will not be let loose. They're off leash. Uh, that's a concern for our ordinance. And uh, that completes my report. Thank you. Is that Mayor? Is that it? Oh, George, it's good to see you back. Oh, thank you. It's always good to be Personnel, back. General Dominic Roberta. I have no business at this time, Mr. President. Streets, Mr. Toth. Yes, sir. Glad to see you in person. Yes, no phone this time. Yeah. <laughs> Motion to amend our Cargill contract to extend the following deadline for delivery to 123123. Second that. Uh, moved and seconded to amend the Cargill contract to extend the deadline for deliveries to December 31st, 2023. And I believe that's the salt, right, Mike? That is. That's, uh, you know, we have to take delivery of 80% of what we order. Our salt bin is full. Every other municipality is pretty much in the same boat. So Cargill has uh, offered to basically just keep it as long as we have it ordered by the end of December. Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Okay. The no name alley was paid between 3rd and 4th Street. My church wants to extend gratitude for doing that. Um, they are very, very pleased. Thank you. They wanted to say thank you. But, you know, Mike and I talked about this. They, the place, the residents that I had a complaint about, apparently to the pavers, was not the worst. There was only one patch paved up near the church. But the residents on the lower end, it's still rough. But like Mike and they were they were there and they were able to, to do it for us because that was the biggest the biggest concern that was everything that was crumbled up and that's what Jim Conlon asked them to do. So when I come in down the way, we had the complaint, but like Mike said, that's all they were 
So that's all they had they, the they did what they were asked to do, and we were lucky to actually have them there. Mm -hmm. do it. And like we just talked about, we really need to talk about Alex. There's so many of them. There's so little money. Money. Okay, the water company's contract will start water line replacement on Wednesday, May 10th on Coal, North, and Ravine Street. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Well, Maybe the, the, the water breaks will quit happening. Yeah. Well, now this is there. still off of, this is from yeah. where Wall. Yeah. yeah. But they actually have yeah. kind of cut yeah. back there in coal, yeah. the water breaks. They haven't had. Parks and Recreation, Deb Foreman, Freeman. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the <Mormon's day>. Yeah, <laughs> the Foreman. Motion to approve the Presbyterian Church of Big Heron use of the field on Saturday, August 12, 2023, for a pass, punt, and kick competition. Second. Early moved a second to approve the Presbyterian Church of Big Heron use of the field on, a, on Saturday, August the 12th. 2023 for punt pass and kick competition. Question. That doesn't interfere with the football team. No, no, they're not practicing on Saturday. Oh, they're not? I thought they were using the balls every Saturday. No, not when they start their games. They're going to have four home games, but their practice is Monday to Friday. Okay. Is August not football season? Well, they're going to start practicing August 5th. Or oh, no, after the after the Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, and a motion to approve the All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Motion to approve the purchase of three to five new picnic tables for Sugar Camp. Second. Very moved and second to approve the purchase of three to five new picnic tables for Sugar Camp. Question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Anything else? That's it, Mr. President. Thank you. Health and welfare. Ms. Marto. No, finance and economic. I'm sorry. I'll go. I'm trying to get her out of the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a problem. Health, <laughs> finance and economic development. Lisa. Thank you. I'm hurrying to get rushing to get out of here. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills as presented. I'll second that. Very moved and seconded to pay the bills. Question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Uh, quick recap of the Pick Harry Night Market. Uh, we had, I believe, 23 vendors in, in total, and that includes uh, nonprofits as well as um, paid vendors. Um, I think the vendors did really well. We definitely had a smaller crowd than we have in the past. So if anybody has suggestions on how we can uh, increase that, I'd be more than happy to take them. <laughs> but overall, I think the vendors were happy. They, they actually did decently for the crowd that we had, so that's good. Um, I did not attend the Broadway Streetscape meeting, so I don't know if you can well, help can, me out with I that can, one. Yeah, I can do a recap. Um, the Allegheny Together that have, that have kind of been working on trying to come up with a plan for uh, Broadway. Um, I think they pretty much was the final final design. They, they're kind of doing it in phases. Phase one would be basically the 600 block down to down to Highland. Um, and then phase two would be the, the 500 block. And then phase three would be further down because the problem, they, they want to do both sides, and the problem is we, they're not sure who owns the property. Part of it's in Monroeville. Um, they toned down the plan a little bit because their original plan was it's buried all the utility lines. It's just, it was just way too much. So, but the things they've come up with, they're going to email us the, the plans when they do. We'll send them out to everybody. The phase one way they want to do it, it's, uh, I think it's pretty nice for that little parklet over by Fox's and that little triangle piece, uh, cleaning that up, adding, they took away the tall trees and just pretty much uh, shrubbery around some bump outs to slow traffic down. One of the other ideas was painting the entire intersection. They said that tends to slow traffic down more. So whenever we get the uh, the final plan, we'll email about that. We are in our final year with them though, correct? Yes. So like, 
these three phases have to be done before December 31st? Well, no, I mean, they, they have the plan. It would be, it would be implementing everything in, in the three different phases. They do this first section. So they may not be holding our hand while we implement these phases. Right. Okay. Right. Most likely, if you would like what they have, we're going to pass it on. Pass it on to Don and say, hey, Don, figure out how we can do this. Yeah. Do they have any plans for the empty lots be between the buildings? They, it, it would be more or less if we can get, attract a couple more businesses, and then the businesses do with what they want with those lots. I know the gentleman that's doing this corner, he's going to try to buy this one right across the street, 600. He's already in the process of getting okay. roads transportation. And if they do, he said he would like to use those for courtyards if he can attract a, a small restaurant to put okay. on the first floor. So. I like that idea. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, there is something that's not on here that I wanted to bring up. Uh, I had a conversation with Sally B. Rubino, our tax collector. Oh, yeah. All right, right. Right. Okay, I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> Erobio. Okay, sorry, Sally. I'm going to watch this later. Um, <laughs> she, uh, I was talking to her about um, storage of the old tax documents, and um, she had mentioned to me that she would love to have like some kind of a, maybe like, let's have a shredding service go up there. She has 20 years of tax documents stored in her house. Her, her and I talked, and I gave her the information to the uh, Westmoreland County, Westmoreland County Blind Association, because they did, when we moved from from 6th Street down to here, we had a ton of records that needed shredding. And they do it at a very, uh, very reasonable price. Will they come to her? They, they will come and pick things up, okay. take them to their place, shred them, and then give her a certificate guaranteeing that everything's been shredded and destroyed. Okay, and that's something they that for years on the process. porch. I know in my particular office, probation and parole, yeah. they did that with a lot of your records, and that was the blind that they did up in Greensboro. Yeah. What, what was the question? We would cover the cost of all yeah, of that. Yeah, that would be something okay. that... Um, well, there was something else I was going to say. And then yeah, I also talked to the, about the, the head end building, using that the source of records. The old, the old building up on top of the hill that we have. Cable equipment was in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're going to put some of our vendor records up there that we can't. Okay. Uh, we can't put I don't know how long she's required to keep those records, but she said it's all computerized. So why do we have to keep paper documents or anything? Yeah. Technology fails. I understand that. Um, also, what what are we giving her right now as far as she had, didn't? I did not have this conversation with her. I'm just asking. What what do we give her right now as far as like her electric or? She gets 25 a month to cover the total cost. Okay. And then anything else she needs, like she needs envelopes, she usually just comes down and takes what she needs from our, from our storage. Okay. And the only, the That's something storage. that she requested a, 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 yes. a, couple year, a year ago or so, the $25 and... Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I just, I didn't realize she was storing stuff in her house and I almost felt like we should make her a storage fee at this point. Does she back stuff up on her computer and put it on a drive and give it I have to somebody or store it somewhere just in case? I don't know if she stores it in the cloud. You have to, you have to ask her that if she keeps the storage off site somewhere else. And yeah, okay. So that's stuff I want to ask her because if that's something she's paying for also, I feel like she shouldn't be paying for that either. Some nice off-site storage or something because... Like, we, you know, we were just talking about fires. Should anything ever happen to her house get flooded or she get Well, that, that's why we talked about the, the building up on the hill. Like she's she's going to be able to score something yeah. up there. Um, yeah. Current record, she has to keep at her house. Exactly. And that's what I mean. Like, should something ever, God forbid, happen in her house, I, I don't know what what would become of that. Or is there, like, does she have to carry some kind of insurance for that? I have no idea how that works. So, just things to think about, that's all. And bouncing off of Lisa's other question about how much we pay her, how long have we been, is she needing her $25 for electric? Does that mean bumped up since? Our rates haven't gone up. Right. So, that's, 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 okay. That was the amount she requested, and that's what we Okay. That's what we're paying. All right, that's all. Thank you. Telephone number. Now my card. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I want to say that Mr. Turner uh, submitted his reports um, from the ex-maintain 
X maintain? Maintain X. Maintain X. I always get that backwards. Um, and the other thing is just a recap of uh, the cleanup day. Um, we had a total of five dumpsters. Two were up on the hill, three were down over the hill. The two or three down here were filled, and up on the hill, one was full. Uh, at the same breath, I want to thank the firemen for coming and helping out the older residents. There were a few.